One billion people worldwide suffer from migraines, and you might be one of them. Migraines are not just bad headaches. They are neurological diseases that can be completely debilitating, causing intense pain, visual disturbances, nausea, and sensitivity to light and sound that can last for hours or even days. If you've ever had a migraine, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, imagine the worst headache of your life, multiply it by 10, add nausea, and the feeling that any light or sound is physically painful, and that's a migraine. I am Dr. Marshall Barr, and I am a physician who treats patients with migraines regularly. Today, I'm breaking down everything you need to know about migraines. What are they from a medical perspective? What causes them? How are they diagnosed? And most importantly, how can you treat them? Whether you're someone who suffers from migraines, you know someone who does, or you're just trying to understand this condition better, this video will give you the complete medical picture. So from a medical standpoint, a migraine is a primary headache disorder characterized by recurrent attacks of moderate to severe head pain with associated neurological symptoms. So let me break that down in plain English. Migraines are a type of headache that comes back repeatedly and causes significant pain, usually on one side of the head, but not always, and comes with other symptoms beyond just the pain. The key word here is neurological. Migraines aren't just pain. They are a dysfunction in how your brain processes sensory information. During a migraine attack, your brain becomes hyper excitable. Normal stimulus that wouldn't normally bother you, like light, sounds, and smells, become overwhelming and painful. Migraines affect about 15% of the global population. That is roughly one in seven people. And women are three times more likely to have migraines than men, largely due to hormonal factors. Migraines typically start in adolescence or early adulthood, though they can begin at any age. This is one of the most common neurological conditions in the world, and it's also one of the most disabling. The World Health Organization ranks migraines as one of the top causes of disability globally. During a severe migraine attack, you literally cannot function. You can't work, you can't take care of your family, you can't do anything except lie down in a dark, quiet room and wait for it to pass. And here's what's frustrating for people with migraines. Because it's an invisible condition, there's no blood test, no imaging that shows a migraine is happening. People who don't experience them often don't understand how disabling they are. They think, it's just a headache, take some aspirin. But anyone who's actually had a true migraine knows it's nothing, nothing like a regular headache. So what actually is happening in your brain during a migraine? We don't understand everything about migraines, but here's what we do know. Migraines involve changes in brain stem activity and imbalances in brain chemicals particularly serotonin. When a migraine attack starts, there is a wave of electrical activity that spreads across the brain, and this is called cortical spreading depression. This wave causes the blood vessels in your brain to first constrict and then dilate, which is the part of what causes the pain. The trigeminal nerve, which is the major pain pathway in your head and face, becomes activated and inflamed. This sends pain signals to your brain. At the same time, your brain becomes hypersensitive to normal stimuli, like lights seem to be brighter, sounds seem to be louder, smells seem stronger, your pain threshold drops significantly. There's also a genetic component. Migraines tend to run in families. If one of your parents has migraines, you have about a 50% chance of developing them yourself. If both parents have migraines, the risk goes up to 75%. We have identified several genes associated with migraine susceptibility, though we're still working to understand exactly how these genes contribute to the condition itself. But migraines also have triggers. These are the things that can set off an attack. And common triggers include stress and emotional changes, sleep disturbances like too much or too little sleep, hormonal changes in women, where many women get migraines around their menstrual cycle, certain foods and drink like aged cheeses, processed meats, alcohol, especially red wine, caffeine withdrawal, and then what about weather changes and barometric pressure shifts? Bright lights, noises, strong smells, dehydration, skipping meals. Everyone's triggers are just a little different, but what sets off a migraine in one person might not affect another person at all. Part of managing migraines is identifying your personal triggers and then avoiding them at all costs when possible. Migraines typically progress through several phases, though not everyone experiences all of them. There's first the prodrome phase. This happens hours or days before the headache starts. You might start feeling irritable, depressed, or unusually energetic. You might have food cravings, neck stiffness, or increased urination. About 60% of people with migraines have prodrome symptoms that warn them the attack is coming. 
And then there's, there's the aura phase. About 25% of people with migraines experience an aura, which is a temporary neurological symptom that usually affects your vision. The classic migraine aura is seeing zigzag lines or flashing lights or blind spots in your vision. Some people experience tingling or numbness in their face, hands, fingers, or toes, and others have difficulty speaking. Auras will typically last 20 to 60 minutes and then resolve as the headache phase starts to begin. And then the bad one, the headache phase. This is the main event. The pain is typically throbbing or pulsating, usually on one side of the head, but it can be both sides. The pain is usually moderate to severe, and it's often described as the worst pain people have ever experienced. Along with the pain, you have nausea and sometimes vomiting, extreme sensitivity to light, which we call photophobia, and extreme sensitivity to sound, which is called phonophobia. Sensitivity to smells, blurred vision, and even lightheadedness occur. Most migraine attacks last from four to even 72 hours if it's untreated. Some people have attacks that can last even longer. And then the next phase is the post drone phase. So after the headache resolves, many people feel drained, confused, or washed out for days at, at end. Some people feel even euphoric. This is sometimes called the migraine hangover. The key diagnostic criteria for migraines include the following. You have to have at least five attacks that meet the criteria. Headaches lasting four to 72 hours when untreated. At least two of these characteristics, one side of pain, pulsating quality, moderate to severe intensity, aggravated by routine physical activity, and then you have to have at least one of these, nausea or vomiting, sensitivity to light and sound, if you're experiencing these symptoms regularly, you should see a medical provider. Migraines are treatable and you don't have to suffer through them. Let me tell you about a patient I treated. We'll call her Sarah. She came to me in her mid thirties and she'd been having severe headaches for years. She described them as the worst pain I've ever experienced. Pain so bad she would vomit, had to lie in a dark room and couldn't tolerate any sound or light. These attacks were happening two to three times per month and each one would knock her out for an entire day, sometimes two days. She was missing work, she was missing time with her kids. She felt like her life was being controlled by these headaches. Sarah had been told by previous doctors that she just had bad headaches and should take ibuprofen. But ibuprofen barely touched the pain. She thought this was just something she had to live with. When I evaluated Sarah, it was clear she had classic migraines, the one-sided throbbing pain, the nausea, the light and sound sensitivity, the fact that routine activity made it worse. It was textbook migraine. We started her on preventative medications to reduce the frequency of attacks and then gave her effective acute treatment for when attacks did occur. Six months later, Sarah's life had changed. She went from two to three migraines per month to maybe one every other month. And when she did get a migraine, she had medication that could stop it within an hour instead of having to suffer through the entire day. She could work consistently. She could be present for her family. She got her life back. This is what appropriate migraine treatment can do. But so many people are suffering without proper diagnosis or treatment because they don't realize migraines are a treatable medical condition. So. How do we treat migraines? Well, there are two approaches. There's acute treatment to stop attacks when they are happening, and then preventative treatment to reduce the frequency of attacks. So for acute treatment, mean, meaning these are medications you take when a migraine starts. There's over-the-counter options like ibuprofen, naproxen, or aspirin combined with caffeine that can work for mild migraines. But for most people with true migraines, over-the-counter medications are just not enough. So then triptans become your best friends. They are the most commonly prescribed migraine-specific medications. Drugs like sumatriptan, rizotriptan, elatriptan, they work by narrowing the blood vessels and blocking pain pathways in the brain. They're very, very effective if taken early on in the attack. Then there are CGRP antagonists. These are newer medications that block a protein involved in migraine pain. These work differently than triptans and can be effective for people who don't respond to the, the normal triptans. And then there's anti-nausea medications that can help with nausea and vomiting that comes along with the migraines. And then what about preventative treatments? Well, these are medications you take daily to reduce how often the migraines occur. So there are actually blood pressure medications like beta blockers that are commonly used for migraine preventions. And then there are antidepressants, particularly amitriptyline, that can prevent migraines. And then you've got anti-seizure medications like topiramate or valproate, which are effective migraine preventatives. CGRP monoclonal antibodies are newer injectable medications specifically designed to prevent migraines. These are new game changers for many people with frequent migraines. And then there are Botox injections, which you can get every three months. They are FDA approved for chronic migraines. That's 15 or more headache days per month. 
Beyond medication, there are lifestyle management things that you can do that are crucial, like maintaining regular sleep schedules, managing stress through relaxation techniques or therapy, identifying and avoiding your personal triggers, staying hydrated, eating regular meals, regular exercise, though this has to be approached carefully since exercise can trigger migraines in some people. The key is working with a healthcare provider to find the right treatment plan for you. What works for one person might not work for another. Migraine treatment is what we call individualized. Now, I wanna talk specifically about migraines in military veterans because this is a population that experiences migraines at a much higher rate than the general public. Veterans, particularly those who served in combat or experienced traumatic brain injuries, have significantly higher rates of migraines. Studies show that up to 30 to 40% of veterans with TBI develop chronic headaches or migraines. The cause in veterans include the traumatic brain injury from blast exposures, concussions, or other head trauma, PTSD and chronic stress. I mean, there is a strong connection between PTSD and migraines. Then there's neck and spine injuries that can trigger headaches. There's sleep disturbances that are common in veterans with PTSD that can cause it. There's chronic pain conditions that coexist with migraines. I mean, for veterans, migraines can be rated by the VA as a service-connected disability. The VA rates migraines under diagnostic code 8100 with ratings ranging from 0% to 50% depending on the frequency and severity of the prostrating attack. Attack. A prostrating attack means a headache severe enough that you actually have to stop what you're doing and lie down. The rating levels are 0% for less severe migraines, 10% for prostrating attacks averaging one per two months, 30% for prostrating attacks occurring on average once a month, 50% for frequent completely prostrating attacks. If you are a veteran with migraines, especially if they started after or during your military service, this is a condition you can and should file for a VA disability. Migraines significantly impact the quality of life and your ability to work, and they are compensatable. So if you're experiencing symptoms that sound like migraines, you should see a healthcare provider. Don't just suffer through them. Migraines are treatable. There are effective medications and strategies that can reduce how often you get migraines and how severe they are when they occur. I'd also recommend keeping a headache diary, which tracks when your migraines occur, how long they last, what your symptoms are, and what potential triggers might have been present. This information will help your medical provider diagnose and treat you effectively. So if you're a veteran with migraines, understand that this is a service-connected condition for many veterans, particularly those with TBI or combat exposure. You deserve both medical treatment and compensation for this disabling condition. So I want you to subscribe to this channel for more medical education content. Listen, I am Dr. Marshall Barr, and my goal is to provide accurate, accessible medical information to help people understand their health conditions better. If this video helped you understand migraines, hit the like button and share it with anyone who might benefit from this information. Listen, 1 billion people worldwide have migraines. Chances are someone you know is suffering from them. So I want you to drop a comment below. Do you have migraines? What's been your experience? What treatments have worked for you? Let's learn from each other. Migraines are real. Disabling neurological condition. They are not just headaches. They are not something you should have to just live with. They are treatable. If you're suffering from migraines, you don't have to suffer alone anymore. Medical help is available. Effective treatments exist. You can get your life back. I am Dr. Marshall Barr. Thank you for watching and take care of your health. And until next time, stay mission ready.